this is from a website called funandholy.com from uh, article um, Godly Men vs. Worldly Men 15 Characteristics of a Godly Man October 27, 2020 You've met a guy oh wait, let's just read this article now You've met a guy at church or maybe you met a decent guy on a dating app and he says he's a Christian but how do you tell if he is a godly man? How do you tell the difference between a godly man versus a worldly man? And what are the characteristics of a godly man? What are the characteristics of a good man according to the Bible? While you may be excited and eager to start dating a guy that goes to church or says he's a Christian, it is wise to pray and discern whether they truly have a relationship with God. In this blog post, we will discuss the qualities of a godly man, including what is a godly man, 15 characteristics of a godly man, signs of a godly man versus a worldly man, quotes about a godly man and how to find a godly man. What is a godly man like? How do you tell if he is a godly man? A godly man is a man who loves God with all his heart and who obeys his word. A godly man has a personal relationship with God and spends time with him. A godly man is a man who seeks God first and who desires to glorify God with his life. Lots of guys call themselves Christians, but they, but they really don't have a relationship with God. They don't read the Bible or even know what God's word says about important issues. Before I surrender my life to Jesus, this is from the Post and Witness article. Um, Reach at the bottom of the article. Um, um, person written this article is a woman by the name of um, it's dumb, it's dumb. Uh, Alice, uh, Alice Kin, Kin. Even that's Kin. Okay. Um, This this article will be catered towards if you have any daughters or any women that are seeking marriage or seeking a godly man, if it's the Lord's will, uh, this article might be of some uh, help to you or, or give you some food at all. But what we is always to search scriptures and to discern. Um, so, um, but the information in this would be helpful um, in just helping you identifying things and afterwards if you want just read scripture um, concerning um, the topic that's just discussed here of what a godly man is and 15, sorry, for, for 14 characteristics of what a godly man is so I hope this will be beneficial to any uh, Christian uh, ladies out there um, very grateful for the woman who wrote this article um, no, this is the woman talking now from actually this is all the woman's article so I'm just reading her article um, System Christ just reading the article um, this is the woman saying uh, the lady of this article writing before I spent my life to Jesus I dated plenty of worldly men who didn't have a relationship with God my thoughts now, sadly, that is the truth for a lot of men and women before they, um, when they were worldly and not saved, they would get her towards um, worldly things because they're not saved. So, um, but, but she said, but after I saved, God showed me how important it was to date someone that loves God and not to be 
equally loved and dating true uh, it's devastating to because you can't love someone unless they love God because God's a source of love so you so that's otherwise it will destroy you and and God does not want that for you God wants you to be fruitful in the vessel for his use and if it's the Lord's will for you to marry you have children or to and it might be the Lord's will for you to remain celibate um, the main thing is to find peace and love in Christ and Christ alone and God alone and I should continue writing this uh, continue reading this article anyway um, while I while I still met plenty of guys who didn't have a relationship with God after I was saved God gave me a discernment to discern a godly man versus a godly woman now this article is going to be a very great help for uh, women out there to really discern the difference between a godly man or, uh, and a worldly man uh, if I had a daughter I would show her this article and then afterwards talk to her about it and give her thoughts on it and just go back and forth if if I had a daughter that's what I do <laughs> just I even write up myself to and say these are godly men qualities these are worldly men worldly men are completely separated from God they only think of themselves and the, the sin and they're consumed by the sin and they're consumed in the flesh well a man of God is in the spirit is seeking the Lord and puts God first while well, worldly man would put you as an idol no. in, in his heart, which leads to idolatry and lusts and other greater sins, sexual sins. So, and a godly man is the one that fears the Lord, where well, his heart, mind, and loves God with all his heart, mind, and soul. He puts God first. And because that, then he's able to love you, because he loves God first. God is love. So, God, you've no love in you. Um, as a woman of faith, you dissolve a godly man who does. As a woman of faith, you dissolve a godly man who dis who dissolves someone who loves God just as much as you do. Find a true man of God doesn't have to be difficult. Trust God to give you discernment to discern whether a guy truly is a man of God. As you wait on God to reveal the man's true heart, here are fifteen qualities of a godly man and characteristics of a good man according to the Bible. A worldly man cares about what other think what others think, versus a godly man only cares about what God thinks. It's a godly man quote by Erin Ellis Q. Elisa, oh that's her name, Erin Ellis Q. Fifteen characteristics of a godly man: how to tell if he is a godly man. As you seek God to reveal the true heart of this man. Below are 15 signs of a godly man to help you identify whether he is a true man of God. This list is by no means meant to be a checklist whether you evaluate these qualities of a godly man for every decent guy you meet. Trust that God will show you whether a guy is a godly man and that you will get to see the guy's true, the guy's true heart with your own eyes. 1. A godly man shows his love for God through his actions. Loving God with all your heart, mind and soul is the first and greatest commandment. A guy can say he loves God but it means nothing unless he puts that love in action. Amen. It's a very good quote from scripture. No. What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? So you see, faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. James 2, verse 14 and 17. How does this man show his love for God? Can you see his love for God evidenced through his actions? Does he have an actual relationship with God? How does he worship God during worship at church? Does he worship God with confidence and praise? It's so beautiful seeing a guy worship God with all his heart, with his arms raised in the air and his eyes closed. In addition to church every Sunday, does he spend time with God during the week? How does he spend his time with God each day? Does he have a consistent routine where he draws close to the God every day? A godly man doesn't just say he loves God, he shows it through his actions. 2. A man of God loves others. You can tell a lot about a person by how they interact with others. 
Loving others is right up there along with loving God. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. Matthew 22 verse 39 NIV. The Bible says that if you hate your brother or sister but say you love God, then you don't really love God. If someone says, I love God but hates a fellow believer, that person is a liar. For if we don't love people we can see, how can we love God whom we cannot see? 1 John uh, verse 4 20 N L dash N L T. Uh, loving others is another way God will show our love for God. But loving others is another way we show our love for God. At church, how does he love others? Does he serve on a volunteer team? How does he act with strangers, waiters at restaurants? Is he polite and considerate to others around him? Is he friendly towards his neighbours? How does he talk about his family? 3. A godly man obeys and lives out God's word. It's one thing to memorize scripture, but a true man of God obeys and lives out God's word. A true man of God will not only read God's word, but live it out in everyday life. A true man of God will know that God's word is not just a book of suggestions, but the instruction manner to life. Jesus replied, but even more, blessed are all who hear the word of God and put it into practice. Luke 11 verse 28 in RT. A godly man will know that obeying God's word is another way he can show his love for God. Loving God means keeping his commandments and his commandments are not bothersome. 1 John 5 3 NLT. Observing his character may take some time. Ask God to reveal any character or behavior that are not in line with God's word. Is he a man of integrity? Will he do what is right, no matter how small or insignificant it seems? What is he reading in the Bible right now? How is God speaking to him through the Bible? Does he think it's important to wait until marriage to have sex? Does he think it's okay to live together before marriage? As you discern whether he obeys God's word, make sure you are studying and meditating on God's word in the meantime. 4. A man of God would be waiting to have sex before marriage. If a man doesn't think it's important to wait to have sex until you are married, then he is out of line with God's word. God's will is for you to be holy, so stay away from all sexual sin. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 3 God created sex to be enjoyed between a husband and wife in marriage only. But there are many guys who claim to be Christian who don't think it's a big deal to have sex before marriage. It's important to understand if he knows what God's word says in this area at all or if he, or if he just doesn't obey God's word. Identifying where he's at will help you if, if he reads and knows God's word at all of he's struggling with this error in his life and it's important to understand if he's struggling and wants to commit to purity or if he's completely disregarding God's word in this area. If he's struggling with sexual sin in his life but wants to surrender this error to God, don't write him off completely. He may not be ready for a relationship until he overcomes his past sexual sin but if he's taken an active role in getting the help, in getting the help he needs from God, godly counsel, then that's a good sign. If a guy makes no effort to change or surrender this heir to God, then it's best not to date him. Even if he goes to church with you, you don't want to date someone who could tempt you into sin or someone who is choosing to continue to sin. A guy's view on sex before marriage will help you tell a godly man versus a, versus a worldly man. If you're struggling with purity and obeying God's if you're struggling with purity and obeying God's design for sex, you can learn more about my story in my blog post, Why I Choose Not to Have Sex Before Marriage. That's the person writing this article. Uh, there are a lot of good Christian purity books on this topic that you can recommend to help him understand how important it is to, ha it, important it is to have sex for marriage. Five, a man of God produces godly fruit in his life. 
The Bible tells us you can tell a good tree by its fruit, but beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep but are really ravenous wolves. You can identify by you can, you can identify them by the fruit that is, by the way they act. A good tree produces good fruit and a bad tree produces bad fruit, yes. Just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. Matthew 7, 15, 12, 17, 20, NLT. Does this guy produce good or bad fruit in his life? Even if he looks good and says all the right things, how is he behaving? Does he behave like a godly man? Or a worldly man. What does he attract? What does he attract in his life? Do his actions align with with how he comes across? When we are saved and accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we are filled with the Holy Spirit who produces fruit in our life. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Galatians 5, 22-23 NLT Does he exhibit the fruits of the Spirit in his life? Do you see him grown in the fruits of the Spirit as he continues to seek God? Don't be deceived by a wolf in sheep's clothing. If he sounds too good to be true while producing good fruit in his life, then he probably is not the, the, the man of God you thought he was. 6. A godly man will be planted in a church community. It is so important for all Christians to be planted in a church to grow close to Christ in a community of other believers. Being planted in the right church and a set of when being planted in the right church accelerates your spiritual growth. Being planted allows you to flourish and grow in rich soil, getting the nourishment and support you need from other believers. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon, planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of our God. Psalms 92 verse 12 13. A church community provides the, the mentors, pastors and friends you need to do life with. For men, it is important that they have all the godly men in their life that they can turn for wisdom and advice. Well, wise leadership, a nation falls. There is safety in having many advisors. Proverbs 11, 14, NLT. Godly, godly counsel is important for all of us, but it's so important for a guy to have other men that he can reach out to for support. Is he planted in a church that he tends regularly? Does he serve on a volunteer team? Does he attend a small group or other events at the church? Does he attend men's prayer? 7. A godly man prays for you. A true man of God will know how to pray. He will know that prayer is powerful and that we are called to pray without ceasing. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 16 to 18. How does he pray for you? Does he offer to pray with you in person? Does he take the lead when praying over your, your relationship? Does he make it awkward? Is he uncomfortable praying out loud? Will men and women know how to pray? A praying man is a sexy man. That's a quote from Aaron LSQ. Man of God. When I heard my husband pray for the first time at church, it was the most beautiful and sexiest thing I ever heard. If your man is a new Christian or doesn't pray with power and authority yet, guide him to a men's, men's prayer group at church. 8. A, a man of God will honour and respect your body. A man that respects your body and your purity is a true man of God. You, can't, you, you can be attracted to each other while still setting physical boundaries in dating and honour God's design for sex and marriage. Even if you've decided not to have sex, it is so important that you both honour and respect each other's bodies. Don't you realise that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself for God brought you with a high price. You, so you must honor God with your body. 1 Thessalonians 6, 19, verse 19 to 20 NLT. 
Does he respect your physical boundaries? Does he try to and tempt you into doing things that you don't want to do? Any man can love your body, but a true man of God loves you for you, not because of your body. This is, this is such a very good quote. A worldly man will love you for your body. A godly man will love you for, love you, for you, not because of your body. If you want to learn more about how to set visual boundaries in a relationship, you can read more in my blog post, How to Set Boundaries in Dating. 9. A man of God makes God a priority. The Bible tells us to seek God first, not last, and that God will take care of our every need. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Matthew 6, verse 33. Prioritize God and living the life God has called us to live is so important. It can be easy to put God last after everything else we, are, we have gone on in our schedules, but when we put God last over time, we drift from God himself and the plans he has for us. Does he make time to put God and other spiritual matters first, or does he make excuses for putting God second? Oh, I can't go to church today, I have to catch up on some work. I can't go to men's connect group this week. I told my buddy I would grab drinks for him. Can we watch Netflix instead of talking about the Bible? You deserve someone who is going to put God first, not last. When he puts God first, he will be able to give you the love and time you deserve. 10. A godly man versus a worldly man on the weekends. You can tell a lot about a person's passions and parties by how they spend their weekend. A godly man will not pursue the the things of this world on the weekends. A god, a godly man will not pursue the, t the a god. Sorry, my apologies, Venus. Um, my phone's my phone's a bit cracked. <laughs> a godly man will not pursue. A godly man will not pursue the things of this of this world on the weekends. If he spends his weekends parroting, he is not the man for you. If he manages to make it to church every Sunday morning, if he spends Friday and Saturday night taking shots with his buddies and parting until 2am, he's not living out God's word. Because we belong because we belong today, we must live decent lives for all to see. Don't participate in darkness or wild parties and drunkenness or, or in sexual promiscuity and immoral living or in quarrelsome and jealousy. Romans 13. Verse 13 and LT. Does he spend his weekends prioritizing God and the life God has called him to live, or does he spend his time on worldly things that put him farther away from God? A godly man won't hit a godly man won't hit you up after midnight. He may be thinking about you, but he knows better than to mess with God's daughter when he's feeling tempted. 11. A man of God will have other godly friends. The people you choose to do life with have a powerful influence on a life. You probably heard the saying, you become, like, you become like the people you surround yourself with, and you become the company you keep. Well, these sayings are actually biblical. As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. Proverbs 27 verse 17 NLT. Walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools and get in trouble. Proverbs 13 verse 20. His friends can either bring him closer to God and support him in his spiritual walk or they can be a bad influence on his life and lead him into a lifestyle of sin and darkness. Do his friends also have a relationship with God? Does his friends encourage him to participate in activities that are out of God's do his friends enc encourage him to participate in activities th that are out of God's line? Do, 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 sorry, my apologies. Do his friends encourage him to participate in activities that are out of line with God's word? Twelve. Godly men are open and honest with sin or struggles. They st or struggles. They. Godly men are open and honest with sin or struggles in their life. We all sin and have a past, but the Bible tells us to confess our sins to each other so we may be healed. If he, doesn't, if he hasn't told you his testimony or doesn't like talking about his past, it may mean he's still struggling, he's, 
means he's still dealing with it or struggling with sin. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. James 5 verse 16 NLT. We all sin, but it's important to help each other get the support we need to overcome the sin. Have you both shared your testimony on how you came to know Christ? Have you shared what sin you've overcame as you surrendered your life to Jesus? Does he openly ask for prayer and support when you're struggling with something? 13. Godly men bring you closer to God. When you look at your normal day to day and weekly activities, does these activities honor God or do they cause you to stray from God's word? For example, if you're spending a lot of time having sex or drinking, these are not in line with God's word. Does he lead you in a relationship and encourage you to grow in your faith? Does he remind you of what God's word says and prays for you when you go through trials? You deserve a man who is going to lead you in aspects of relationship, especially spiritually. Don't set up for anyone who hinders your spiritual growth. Learn, learn more about why the man should be the leader in the relationship. Check out my blog post, should you ask a guy out already. 14. A godly man acts like a Christian throughout the week and not just on Sundays. Sure, you may meet a good guy who goes to a church every Sunday and volunteers in a kid's church. Adorable, I know. But if, he doesn't, but if he isn't spending time with God and living in a way that pleases God the rest of the weekend, he's not a godly man for you. We were, we were intended to have a relationship with God and make him the center of our life, not just the center of our Sundays. A lot of people think it's good enough to go to church every Sunday and can do whatever they want during the week. But that's not good enough for God. God wants our whole heart every day of the week not just one day out of seven that's all that's that's almost like saying your boyfriend can be a loving committed boyfriend to you on sundays but can date or do whatever he wants the rest of the week would you want to be with someone who only wants to be your boyfriend one day out of the week don't accept for a guy who goes to church every sunday if he really isn't following god the rest of the days of the week 15. A man of God speaks life with his words. The Bible tells us that life and death are in the tongue. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its food. Proverbs 18, verse 21. The words that we speak are powerful. We don't have power to either speak life or death. The Bible also tells us that we say is an overflow from the heart. If we speak poorly, then that indicates that our hearts need some attention. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart, and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. Luke 6, verse 45. Does he swear or talk badly about others? Does he gossip? Does he complain or talk negatively over people or life in general? If he is speaking debt, it may be a sign he does, doesn't know God very well or that he has a heart issue he needs to deal with. If you are single and struggling to speak, speak life over yourself and men in general, check out how to speak life over sick, speak life over singleness. Oh, this the woman gives you um, the last part of it is to how to find a godly man. Now that you know the characteristics of a godly man to look out for, how do you find a godly man? Where do godly men hang out? Being actively involved in a local church is one of the best ways to meet other godly men and friends to do life with. That's why it's so important to find a local church community that feels like home. And the keys and the key and the key to meeting other people and godly men at church is to be actively involved. Don't just expect to meet your future husband in the lobby at the church on a Sunday morning. Join a volunteer or servant team, attend a small group of events the church hosts, put yourself out there and attend different church events. If you're still hoping to find a good church, do some research online. Find churches that have events and groups for younger people, just such as young adults or young professionals. A lot of churches have all their ministries on their website and many have events or groups for single men and women. Meet my husband at church was a big part of our God written love story, but God men go to many other places in addition to church. Think of all the places you go to on a weekly basis where God and church may be a 
big part of your life you probably go to many other places where men also go the grocery store dine, dinner with your friends the gym a hike the beach god men have passions and interests just like you and after scooping out the guys at your local church Consider going to places that you enjoy may allow you to meet other men that share your same hobbies and passions. As you pray to meet your future husband, pray and ask God if you should consider the following on how to find a God man. 1. Church and being actively involved at the church. 2. Christian day and apps online day. And 3. Your neighbours. 4. Join a meetup club or sports team in your city. 5. Walk. 6. A volunteer event organization. 7. Attend a social event sourced by your friends or other couples you know. 8. Christian conferences or concerts. 9. Places you go to every week like the grocery store or gym. And 10. Local restaurants or coffee shops. Oh, she said this next. Um, are you praying for your future husband? Praying for your future husband is powerful. It doesn't. It it doesn't matter if God has already revealed who your future hobby is, or if you're still waiting on God to bring you your man. Prayer is one of the best things you can do to support your future husband. If you're looking to pray over your future husband and become a, the wife he is looking for, as you wait for on God to bring you together, you can join my free 14 day. 10 your future husband challenge to get their topics, prayers and Bible verses to pray over. In this challenge we see the prayers and Bible verses I prayed most uh, as I wanted them God to bring me my husband. We got married in 2020 so I know the prayer is powerful. You can download my free prayer guide. Um, so, um, with love, Eris Ellington. I think I said her name right. Uh, thanks so much for watching this uh, video on uh, funandholy.com 15 characteristics of of, um, of a godly man, godly man, godly man versus a worldly man, 50, 15 characteristics of a godly man.